And welcome guys back to another video. So today I'm going to be making this video that I've been planning to make for a month now. So a month ago I ordered a class ring by customizing it online and I sure made a video on it. It's called how to devote your college savings on a class ring or something like that. And it was like a three minute video and many of you liked it. And I think I kind of said, you know, if I get it, once I do get the ring, I will make a review video on it. I'll probably be making a video on it once I get it four to six weeks later. So, you know, stay tuned. And several days ago, I actually did receive my ring and it's in my hand right now. And I, um, I didn't make an unboxing video because first of all, at the moment, um, at that time, there was someone in the house. But more importantly, I wanted to see it first and then after like examining it and all that, then give a final say instead of like giving a first impression or whatever when everything is so disorganized it might be chaotic. So let's just jump right into it. Bam. This is the ring. This is what it looks like right here. And uh, as you can see, it is massive. That's the first thing I thought when I first opened the box, uh, which is which is in here. Uh, well, I should show you the box first. Sure, it came, this is from Justin's by the way. I think Justin's controls a lot of class ring stuff and they make other things like football rings or whatever, like college rings and other pilot rings or whatever. Uh, class rings happen to be just one part of their expertise. As you can see, um, here's Justin's, the, their logo. This box you do need to pay for and the reason why I paid for it was because the box was supposed to have a glass top so that you could see it, uh, you could see the inside of it. Um, even when it's closed like that, but uh, apparently it wasn't, but I mean that doesn't affect me in a way, but for people who were really looking forward to that, well, that's that's a GG for you, but here's what the inside of the box looked like, and the ring was, uh, it wasn't stuck inside, it was, I think, it was like this, it was just inside like that when I first opened it, and here, here was a sponge for... I don't know what reason, maybe to clean the ring or to keep it in place, I don't know. But this box is pretty unimportant. This is what the ring came in. That's all I'm going to say right now because, you know, this was in the package. This was in a larger package, obviously, when it came to my mailbox. But anyway, this is the ring that I'm going to be talking about. Um, it came in this box, as I said earlier. And this was, this is absolutely massive, as you can see here. That is the first thing. When I, when I pulled this out, I was like... This is much larger than I expected. So as you can see here, let, let's just get a closer look right here. The jewel, the red top, uh, the, the whole thing, the pedestal, it's really tall. Like I was not expecting this. Like, when I first put it on, I was like, this is really tall. Like if I uh, maybe like swing my hand somewhere, it could get caught, which I guess don't wear your ring if you're doing physical activities, which is obviously, you know, common sense. Don't <laughs> don't wear a ring when you're doing physical activities in case you get ring avulsion, which rips your finger out, which is not good. Let's just get into the more specifics, I guess. So here, as you can see, red stone. Why the red? Well, these are apparently birthstones. My birth month is July, and apparently the stone that corresponds with July is ruby, which is why it's red. But um, I do hear that the stones on the top are worthless. They're just colored stones just to decorate the ring. They're not, it's not, I don't think, I don't think it would actually be ruby. Like the birthstones differ by each month. So if one stone was more expensive than the other uh, birthstone, that's kind of unfair, you know? I've heard from other people as well, from websites as well. Uh, these stones, I hear they are useless, but look at that cut. This is, I, I believe this is the premier cut. There's a lot of other cuts that you can get, like fire ray cut or whatever. Um, this is this is the first choice, and this is the most uh, I think the most traditional classic choice that you can go with. Let's look at this more closely again. On the front, there is my school name. There's a first. This is side one of the ring. As you can see here, it has Anderson, which is my name, and class of 2020 because that's my graduating year. This entire ring is completely customizable. So I do get why it cost over three hundred sixty dollars, in including tax, because this is like your own ring. There's like no other ring in the world that could be as unique as this one because you can customize your own thing. You can get, you know, your name and what you want engraved, like what image you want engraved on the side and things like that. Like it's super customizable. So I, I do get why it's super expensive. And on the other side, it says Sintar, which is my Korean name, uh, just in English form. And there's a Korean flag with, uh, you know, it says Korea down there. It says Hanguk. And it's written in Korean down there in the little square. Uh, that's part of the design. I couldn't, I can't control that thing. I'm glad it did because there's a lot of country options in the whole ring design thing. And Korea is the only country design that has its name engraved in the little square. Other things like, let's say US, it doesn't have, um, like the American flag doesn't have US engraved down here. But Korea is like the only one that has its uh, country name engraved on the ring, which I thought was really neat. 
And so I got it, obviously, because I'm Korean. For these names on top, Sunshar and Andrew Shin, the limit for Justin's was 10 characters, which was incredible for me because Andrew Shin and Sunshar, they are all 10 letters, which is the maximum it can be. So I just thought it was perfect. It was definitely perfect. And it just fit right there, so I really loved it. And so I thought that was fine. I don't know if you can see here, but inside the ring, there's a... Uh, and there's an engraving, and I put it as Shin Seung Chao, which is my Korean name, uh, dash uh, 2002, July 9th, which is my birthday, and yeah! See, I it's completely customizable. The inside engraving uh, can be up to 30 characters long. Another thing is that, uh, let's see here, the band. The band here, as you can see, is just a smooth band. Other options, there could be little grooves on the band, which is another thing you can do, but I, I did get the smooth band because it is traditional, um, and you know, traditional is the way to go for me because I don't know class rings that much. This is actually the first time I've seen uh, a class ring in real life and even, you know, heard about the tradition of class rings. And I got it, obviously, in, in the video I, I recorded a month ago. I got it because it is a once in a lifetime thing and there is no other life where I'll be graduating in 2020. So, I obviously got this for, uh, to commemorate uh, for my own graduation in 2020. And yes. All right, let's talk about the medal. So this medal is called White Lustrium, which is a Justin's exclusive medal, apparently. White Lustrium. This is the cheapest medal you can get uh, on your ring. Other ring options uh, have like silver or like gold or like... It's so crazy. There's like so many types of medals that you can get, but they are incredibly more expensive. Um, this medal, uh, White Lustrium's default price is $302 uh, for the ring I chose. And uh, when it goes to silver, silver was $140 more expensive than that. Gold is like, wow, no, gold is... And there's like several different types of gold as well, like 18 karat, 14 karat, 10 karat. Dude, 18 karat is like, it's like over like nearly two grand, which do you really want to spend two grand on a class ring? Like I spent $360, but I mean, it was worth it. But gold, are you serious? That's like way too expensive. No, nah, man. Um, if you want to know what type of ring this is, Justin's has a lot of different types of rings. And this is the Tribute, uh, Men's Tribute. And this apparently is like the most common, like this is the most traditional. And like, if you say class ring, this is like the first design that comes up. There's like a couple other designs that have different names and stuff. Um, I think according to them, they're a bit bigger and they're slightly um, different. And the ways that you can engrave the things are kind of different. I chose this design by the way, because there were so many options for the sides, like there were countless options. Like if you do sports or something, you could add like your sport. If you do swimming, let's say I, I did swimming. So if I wanted to do swimming, I could engrave swimming here. But you know, there's there were countless options. Um, so which is why I went with the tribute design because different designs have like different types of engravings that you can do. So I, since this had the most, I went with this one. So I don't think there's a lot more that I can talk about other than, you know, wearing it. Uh, this is a size 8.5 for my fourth finger. First of all, the band is really wide. As you can see, it's incredibly wide. This, this, even the bottom part, that's probably, um, close to like six or seven millimeters. And the top is like two centimeters almost. Obviously wide bands, you need a larger ring size because it's going to be harder to pull off, obviously. So I went with an 8.5. Uh, I think my usual fourth finger size is an 8, but I went with 8.5 because, you know, if I grow larger also, um, an 8.5, you know, I want that Lee room, but it fits right, right now, and it just doesn't fall off. This is like right, right now, so I'm wondering if I should have gone to 9, but I think it's fine. If I, if I don't gain weight or anything, it's gonna be perfectly fine, but like, yeah, here's the ring as it is on my fourth finger, as you can see, really, really tall. This is like, yeah, it's like if you get caught on something, um, the stone's gonna be obviously the first one to get knocked out. But yeah, this is, this is it. This is it. This is how it looks like when I wear it. And it's completely huge. Um, I know you're kind of supposed to wear it on your right hand, but dude, I write, I do everything with my right hand. Like for example, you go to school and you write stuff. Like it's the big ass ring is huge. It's gonna be super heavy. So. I'm gonna wear it on my left hand, which marriage, like really? No, I'm not gonna talk about that. That's why I'm gonna do it on the left hand, which does, doesn't really matter. You can do it on your index finger, but obviously size wise, you know, my fourth finger is the best one. So that's what I'm going with. All right, so 
that has been the video for today. You know, review for Jocelyn's Class Rings, which I think is pretty great. If you want one, then you should definitely buy one, I think. If you hated high school, well, then you shouldn't because why would you spend $300 on somewhere you already hate? But for me, uh, this was to commemorate my high school life. Um, so for $300, which probably would have been spent on something else unimportant if it wasn't spent for the spring. Uh, rather than spending it on unimportant things, why not spend it on something more uh, meaningful and more precious or whatever. So that's why I spent money on this class ring because, you know, to commemorate 2020 graduation. Uh, if you have enjoyed, uh, leave a like on the video, comments down below. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you want to check more of these stuff, then go ahead. And I will be link leaving links uh, to the previous class ring video of me designing it. And the Jocelyn's website review, I guess. That in the end screen and in the description below. And in the, maybe in the comment section. Alright guys, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys later. Goodbye.